Good afternoon, friends. This is once again Dr. Kushal Bhattacharya, and I should and I today should be explaining how a drive line or how a power transmission takes place uh, from the engine to the rear axle or to the front axle, and how the drive is divided. And we should uh, understand all the components which are involved in the transmission of power from the prime mover, and how does the transmission takes place. Uh, apart from the gearing, exploding the gearing box, I should understand, I should explain what are the important uh, components which are involved in power transmission and we should draw a layout of how the power transmission takes place and we should discuss uh, uh, the important components, for example, propeller shaft and the universal joint in this video, in this lecture. And for the next upcoming uh, videos, we should discuss the gearbox and the differentials. Now, first we should understand how the schematic diagram of how the how the power moves. Now, let us assume that uh, if uh, let us assume that how the power movement takes place. Now, you see that uh, uh, first of all we consider a rear wheel drive. What is basically called a rear wheel drive? I should explain. Uh, what is when there are that there are two, uh, there actually there are two axles. First, the, 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 the first axle is the front axle. Front axle, if you could see, if you, if you could see my video, there are two axles basically. So the first one is the front axle of a car, and second one is the rear axle of a car. So if you see that there are two axles of the car, which is the front axle and the another one is the rear axle of the car. Now if you see that, if, if, you, if you visualize this, if you, if you draw a car, if you draw a car, uh, if you draw a car, if you see that, this is the, uh, here the perpendicular to the board, this is the front axle and perpendicular to the, uh, this one, this is, if this is the, uh, this, uh, if this is the front part of the car, uh, uh, Suppose if this is the front part of the car, or let's take it like this way, if this is the front part of the car, so this is the front part of the car and if this is the, uh, how to mark is, if you put like this, if you put a steering system, if this is the front part of the car, so perpendicular to the board is the front axle and perpendicular to the board, the, the axle which is present is called the rear axle. Now if you see that, what happens basically, if the power comes to the front axle, if from the tri if the, from the engine the power goes to the front axle which is normally nowadays used it is called as the front wheel drive then it is called as the front wheel drive then it is called as the front wheel drive now if the power moves to the rear axle and uh, in, uh, and then uh, in case of a front wheel drive the rear axle is not uh, is not uh, live so what is the meaning of life? It will, it, that, that means power is not flowing to the rear axle. Power is only flowing to the front axle. So it, uh, so, uh, so it becomes the rear axle becomes dead. That means dead means it's not static. It is moving, but power is not moving to it. So this is called the then the system in the car is called as the front wheel drive car. Now if the power comes to the rear wheel, if the power comes to the rear wheel. If the power comes to the rear wheel, what happens basically? So and the front wheel is not is on is dead. That means if the front wheel is dead, that is front wheel is not moving. It is only uh, rotating. The main power comes to the rear wheel. So in that type of car is called as the rear wheel drive car. That type of car is called as the rear wheel drive car. Rear wheel drive car. That type of car is called the rear wheel drive car. Most of the heavy passenger cars, most of the heavy passenger cars like the trucks or uh, like the trucks. So these are all the, are the rear axle are all in rear axle drive wheel. And here the rear axle is a live axle and the front axle is a dead axle. Most of the uh, heavy vehicles you for you could see you could see a uh, rear axle drive. So that means the rear axle is a driven axle and the and the front axle is a following axle. Now, uh, important discussion is that all the modern vehicles, all the modern sophisticated vehicles, if you see all the modern sophisticated vehicles, uh, yeah, there is uh, the drive system over here is a front wheel drive. So, uh, how you could, we could conclude that all the passenger cars, all the passenger cars, all the, all the passengers, all the passengers or heavy vehicles or heavy vehicles, you could get a rear wheel drive. You could get a rear wheel drive now and all the sophisticated cars 
or all the luxurious curves, all the luxurious curves, all the luxurious curves, you get a front wheel drive car. You will get a front wheel drive. Now here is the advantage and disadvantage in both the system. Now, so all the luxurious cars or all the sophisticated cars you see, you will get a front wheel drive and all the passenger cars and heavy vehicles cars, you will get a rear wheel drive. Now there's an advantage or disadvantage in both the system. But first of all, whatever is developed is the rear wheel drive, then comes the front wheel drive. Now the, then comes as the uh, then comes as a front wheel drive uh, front axle uh, 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 then comes the front wheel drive now basically what is the advantage the main job of the front wheel is to uh, to give the direction uh, to the vehicle now if on that power is provided to it so it gets an extra burden to provide direction to provide direction to first to provide direction and to provide drive so there is an extra burden given to the front axle. So this is what happened. There is a problem. The mechanism over here becomes a very much complicated because it is providing direction as well as it provides drive. So there is a complicated. Now this is a disadvantage. What is the advantage? So the advantage is that here for transmitting the drive from the front wheel to the rear wheel when the engine is located at the rear, when the engine is located at the front and you are transmitting it to the rear, it takes all of arrangements, all these mechanical arrangements are not there. And as all the mechanical arrangements are not there, so what happened? Mechanical efficiency will high. Because why? Because whenever a linkage is provided, whenever uh, whatever mechanism is provided, there will be not be 100% transmission. So there will be a loss, mechanical loss. So all these losses will not be there. But, the, but what happened here, there is a positivity is that the, the linkages are less, but it becomes the complicated mechanism in the front because it is providing direction to the vehicle as well as to provide drive to the vehicle. Now, for the passenger vehicles, it comes for the, there is no other option than the, uh, then you have to go for the rear wheel drive. In some cars, in some cars, in actually in army cars, there is four axles are like the total, these four axles are drive. This type of cars are called four wheel drive cars. This type of cars are called four, four wheel drive cars. This type of cars are called four wheel drive cars. This type of, that means all the four wheels are live axle. All the four wheels are live axles. So this type of cars are called four wheel drive cars. Now, this is all about the system we are discussing. Now, how the transmission of power takes place. Suppose we are first talking about the rear wheel drive now the rear wheel drive mechanism how the power transmission takes place suppose uh, we take that you know, we, if you see a block diagram of it if you see a block diagram of it this is an engine this is an engine uh, which there are cylinders are there which there are four cylinders are there suppose there are four cylinders are there the engine is there four cylinders are there and the piston is there and the piston is there and the piston is there at the different positions and on it what happens and what he, on it what happens the crankshaft is present on it what happens the crank uh, the crankshaft is uh, the crankshaft is present now from the crankshaft what happens there is a flywheel is connected there is a flywheel is connected now as the uh, as the function of the crankshaft you know to transmit the reciprocating motion of the piston to the rotating motion to the rotating motion and that rotating motion is transferred to the flywheel so this component is called as the flywheel so this component is called as a flywheel flywheel this component is and this component is called as an engine this is the prime mover this is producing the main power so what happened the uh, the engine the power is moved the transmitting the the reciprocating power of the piston has been transmitted to the rotating power of the flywheel over the flywheel there is another element called clutch it depends on the it depends on the requirement of the driver when to engage and disengage of the clutch and when the clutch is engaged the power moves and from this clutch there is this is called there is, this uh, this is called clutch this is called the clutch and from this clutch comes another important component which is called as the gearbox which is called as the gearbox now here the gearbox what happened here there are different types of gears are there which i should be discussing afterwards different types of gears are there uh, <coughs> top gear how many types of top gears are there 
so different type of gear arrangements are there different types of gear arrangements are there so power what happens power moves from here when the shaft is connected to the, this axle and from this axle power moves <coughs> with the help of the type of gears you used uh, to this gearbox uh, now from the output of the gearbox what happened there is a shaft which is called as the propeller shaft there is a shaft which is called as a propeller shaft now this propeller shaft connects this connect this to a differential mechanism to a differential mechanism and from this differential mechanism it is transmitted to the rear axle and the car moves now here this is the unit that is the propeller shaft which transmits power from the from the gearbox to the transmitting unit to the differential mechanism so here this system is known as the propeller shaft which we should discuss today and we should and how the propeller shaft works basically we should understand and and over here what are the uh, what are the units required for the propeller shaft for the movement we should discuss uh, we should discuss in this lecture now we should come to the discussion of a propeller shaft now how does the propeller shaft looks like how does the propeller shaft looks like if you see this if you see this the figure so this is uh, basically uh, this is called the propeller shaft this is called the propeller shaft and over here it is connected this is called a universal joint this is one universal joint and that is another universal joint and as it is a professional sh propeller shaft is a big shaft so it is broken line is shown because it is a continuous line and this is a sliding joint and this is a sliding joint now what is uh, so this propeller shaft is connected one uh, this sorry universal joint is connected to the transmission system that that is a gearbox and another pro and universal joint is basically connected to the differential mechanism uh, differential mechanism or depending uh, or depending upon the what type of axial system uh, rear axle system is there whether it's fully for floating three quarter, quarter floating so it depends upon this the actual actual depend upon the position of the axle there can be two universal joint and one another universal joint and another one is called a sliding joint now basically what is the purpose of the uh, propeller shaft now what have what happened what are the forces basically acting on the propeller shaft the first force which is acting on the propeller shaft for which it is uh, designed is the torsional load the torsional load is basically applied to the uh, propeller shaft because it is transmitting the force from the from the <coughs> from the uh, from the gearbox to the differential mechanism so what happens i told you propeller shaft is mainly used for the rear axle drive so what happens so the main force is transmitted the torsional force the main to the force is transmitted a torsional force so propeller shaft is normally a hollow shaft now propeller shaft is normally a hollow shaft another important thing of the propeller shaft is that uh, uh, as it is connected uh, uh, as it is connected with the rear axle so what happens whenever uh, there is the movement of the axle because during a bump or during a or during when a bump comes in the road or a, or a speed breaker comes in the road as the vehicle moves up so what happens there should be a allowance uh, for allowance for that so that uh, the propeller shaft uh, can have that at their degree of freedom so that it can move up and down that purpose has been served by the universal joint because as the as the vehicle as a lower part of the vehicle moves up and down the universal joint gives that amount of freedom to adjust and once I've, and another thing is that the sliding joint what is the purpose of the sliding joint whenever the vehicle moves up the propeller shaft can become can becomes can move in this direction that is the sliding it can move in this direction and it can adjust the space and it can adjust the space accordingly it can move in that that's why there's a sliding joint is provided so universal joint gives a degree of freedom uh, so that uh, give the de de uh, degree of freedom when the vehicle moves up and uh, during a bump uh, and what happen and as uh, and as the uh, and as the space between the uh, actual uh, wheel base is reduced what happened or, or uh, as as the vehicle moves up it moves in the forward direction so what happened the sliding joint moves up and adjusts the space now now let us talk about the universal joint now how basically the how does the universal joint works you see there is an universal joint now if you see there is a there are two axle now there is a two axle there is a two shafts one is shaft a and another one is shaft b 
basically what happens is that what we know is that uni uh, universal joint is used where when the when where the universal joint is used the universal joint is used when there is a when there is a requirement for intersecting shaft that is the shafts are uh, intersecting and the angle of the intersections uh, that uh, could vary and there is a variation of the angle of intersection that is the two shafts are at an angle uh, the, and the, that is the two shafts are lying at an angle so if you could see that the shaft a uh, the center line of the shaft a and the center line of the shaft b are at an angle that the center line of the shaft a and center line of the shaft b lies at an angle you could see the angle the sh uh, the, it lies at an angle so this is uh, because it lies at an angle so this is the angle so uh, this is the angle of the shaft so b because of this angle of the shaft what happened this type of joint for this type of joint universal joint plays now if you see the diagram if you see the diagram as i've shown you you have seen the diagram here if the gear here if the engine is there here the uh, flywheel is there from engine a flywheel is there from flywheel the clutch is there from clutch the gearbox is there and from this gearbox what happened the power moves to the rear axle so what happens the power as the power moves to the rear axle so there have to be there have to be an universal joint so this uh, there have to be an universal joint in both the cases because there have there is a differential uh, depending upon the rear axle, I have told you in the first, depending upon there can be uh, one or two universal uh, joints. So what happens, the universal joint plays the part. Now you see how it appears. See, the axial A, uh, the axial A and axial B, both are intersecting shafts. You could see from here, these are intersecting shafts. So what happened, as because intersecting shafts, the axial A has a yoke, the axial A has a yoke. And actual B also has a yoke. The actual A is marked in black color, and actual B is my and, and sorry, and the shaft B is marked as uh, blue color. The shaft A, uh, which is coming, uh, which is coming, which is one end of the propeller shaft, is coming from here or one end of the drive shaft. It depends. So propeller shaft normally ca comes over here when it takes power from the transmission system, and it could be uh, and it could be the blue one can be the propeller shaft because it could be taking the transmission from the transmission system. Now, if the the shaft a is in black color and the shaft B is in black color so shaft A consists of a yoke and shaft B also consists of the yoke so now the shaft A and shaft B is connected with connected with a uh, connected with a C with a corner uh, so with a forearm uh, with a forearms uh, with a cross section C which is basically a uh, four arms are there which is basically a uh, four arms are there which is basically if you could see which is basically four arms are there if I if I draw this view if I draw this view there it consists of a four arms are there four arms the cross section C consists of a four arms the cross section C consists of a four arms now here this universal joint now over here we are using hooks joint because it is the most widely used universal joint because it is in very compact in design as because it is very compact in design so what happened the efficiency is much more and the and it could move 18 degree plus and minus 18 degree plus and minus depending on its position now if you see that the yokes are there the yokes are connected with the four arms now the, the now the shaft a has got a yoke now this yoke is connected with the with the cross section c with the help of a bush so here it is connected with the help of a bush so the two arms of the of this for the forearm is connected four arms is connected with the shaft a and two arms of the shaft b is connected with this horizontal portion of the forearm so this uh, this portion so this one is connected with shaft a and this two arms are connected with shaft b now what happens where well, what happens if you could see that the shaft a could have a motion the shaft a could move uh, uh, the shaft a could move uh, the, uh, the shaft a could move along the perpendicular to the x axis if you see that the perpendicular to the x axis the shaft a could move like this the shaft a could move like this and that is up to plus minus 18 degree the shaft a has got a movement and shaft y and the and the, and the shaft b can move perpend uh, and shaft b can move and shaft b can move based on this y axis it could move based on this y axis that means shaft b could move if it is a y axis it could move like this it could have a motion like this and the shaft a as it is connected like this it could have a motion like this that is it could move 
uh, it could move if, if, you know, the, if the shaft is like this so the yoke could move like this the shaft, yoke could move the shaft, shaft A could move like this and the Y is and the, and the shaft B is connected to the yoke uh, Y so it could have a motion like this it could have a motion like this so so that means if that is an efficiency of this motion uh, the, it could the, the shaft A could move if you see this direction it could move uh, along the x-axis along the uh, taking the axis that is a uh, that is the uh, movement of the along uh, this axis it could go plus minus 18 degree and the shaft B also along the y axis can move plus minus 18 degree so this uh, this is the connection which is done uh, for the uh, uh, this is the universal joint which basically uh, does the uh, uh, operation of the movement of the propeller shaft so that it uh, now the total unit also transmits power also transmits uh, the 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 movement, the circular movement or the torsional movement, the total unit transmit the total torsional movement. So this can be the this can be the end of the gearbox and this can be the end of the propeller shaft. And this can be the end of the prop that means this this could be this region, this could be this region, this region, and or the, the end of the propeller shaft can be connected with the differential. So here, this the opposite side, this could be the propeller shaft for B, and over here, this could be the for the driving shaft, that is from the actual of the differential. Now, so it depends upon the design, how many types of universal joints is required. Now, as I've shown that, there is one another problem of using propeller shaft is that, so when there is a longer, there is a longer, there is a length of the, there is a length of the, uh, vehicle is long if the length of the vehicle is very long so what happened uh, so uh, the, uh, there is another important term which is called wheeling uh, which is called uh, wheeling speed what is basically wheeling speed is that when a shaft moves on an axis when a shaft moves on an axis as we know there is no perfect that is if the center line of the shaft and the axis of rotation are not in the same so so that is called called the wheeling speed basically if you see over here if you see if you see that if a shaft moves like this, if a shaft, if a shaft is like this, if a shaft is like this, if it's CG and axis of rotation, if it's, that means, if a shaft is moving like, if it's CG and axis of rotation due to different, are different, axis of rotation are different, that is by an epsilon space E. What happens by an epsilon E? What happened when the shaft is rotating? When the shaft is rotating, when the shaft is rotating, it got a transverse movement. It got a transverse movement. It, uh, it got a transverse movement. And what happened? Our uh, wheeling frequency, uh, uh, the, the system starts to dump. Uh, so system starts to dump, uh, jump while, while movement. Now what happened? When this when this movement frequency when this movement frequency is equal to the critical is equal to the natural frequency of the shaft is equal to the natural frequency of the shaft what happens resonance will take place resonant vibration that means its amplitude becomes very high and what happens fracture takes place on the shaft so basically what is uh, normally done for the propeller shaft is that its uh, length is increased uh, so, uh, so sorry its critical speed is increased now it crit its critical speed of the propeller shaft cannot be uh, can be increased so that uh, so, so that it does not go for a uh, it does not uh, uh, it does so that so that its critical speed is increased so its natural free frequency does not uh, match with the so that the frequency of the uh, that is the frequency of this vibration does not match with the natural frequency of the shaft and so that resonance cannot take place its critical speed is increased now there are two ways of increasing the critical speed number one first to increase its diameter it's increase its diameter now if you increase the diameter of the shaft what is basically the problem is that you are basically increasing the inertia of the shaft now as the inertia of the shaft is increased so more it will the power loss that is the power transmitted from the uh, from the gearbox to the uh, uh, to the universal uh, to the uh, to the uh, from the gear from the gearbox uh, to the differential mechanism what happens the power loss they will take place a lot a power loss will take place so as because the inertia is high so so this point is not considered so another consider is that its length could be its length could be increased its length could be increased so that if if it's uh, if it is uh, sorry if its length could be decreased because what happens if its length is decreased then this critical speed is uh, uh, so its length is directly proper is inversely proportional to the critical speed to the square of the critical speed not uh, natural frequency is to the 
to the square of the critical speed so what happens if the length is decreased half then this critical speed will increase four times so what happens basically all the cars all the modern trucks what they do say they, instead of having a long propeller shaft they divide it, the propeller shaft into two parts so that its critical speed is uh, so that the car that the movement or uh, that is the natural that is the transitional movement will never touch the natural frequency and never the resonance will take place at whatever the speed so normally they break the length into two parts instead of having a long propeller shaft so basically this is all the the, the, the topics of discussion what I have done uh, what I have explained about the first what I have explained the propeller shaft and how does the propeller shaft transmits motion so if we, uh, number one number two second we have designed how the propeller shaft working takes place or what are the units required for the propeller shaft that is one is the universal joint the universal joint and another one is the slip joint and the third we have under we have uh, we are given understand even understanding of how the universal joint works and the fourth we have uh, we have targeted upon the the length of the how the uh, how the wheeling frequency of the propeller shaft can be reduced so this are or, or how to avoid the wheeling speed of the frequency by raising the critical speed so we have this we have touched all these four points now if you like my way of delivering the lecture you can put a thumb up to it and you could subscribe to my channel for more videos like this uh, like related to automobile and mechanical engineering thank you have a good day